What's up guys and welcome back. Today I have a great beginning level woodworking project. This is gonna be great for those of you just starting out and looking for something to sell on possibly an Etsy store or on Facebook Marketplace. Um, this is gonna make a great gift to give away to a friend. I just made one for my wife. Or at the very least, it's a good project just to practice some skills. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this project is probably gonna be about 100 times easier if you start with some S4S lumber. However, in my area, what is easier to find for me is S2S, so I will typically start with that. Here I am just squaring up this board. Uh, sometimes I do have to go with rough cut, but that is neither here nor there. Um, so I'll start by squaring up this board, and then I will cut this board down into three equal sections on the chop saw. That is what my plans called for, and this was the perfect size board to do it. So I'll cut this into three equal sections and then I will glue those sections up to give me the top of my project. Now this project is gonna consist of basically only two components. There's gonna be a flat top, which acts as essentially more counter space. And then there will be a bottom, uh, we'll call it, I don't know, kind of essentially a box for this project to sit on. This is just the base of the project. It will one, elevate, uh, the top over the grates of the stove as well as conceal the stove inside of the box so you don't see anything when you're looking from the outside. Now I'm back over to the table saw and I'm cutting down, I'm ripping down the pieces for the base of my project. Now I didn't create any uh, build plans or measurements for this because it's gonna be different for every stove. If you're gonna be selling on Facebook, I recommend you have somebody measure the stove for you, the client. And if you're gonna be selling on Etsy, maybe include a variety of different sizes for them to choose from so that way they can do the measurement for you and then you have your finalized cut sheet basically sent to you as you're closing on the sale. All right, so I've run into a bit of a problem here is I wasn't paying attention when I cut this piece. And then when I finally was cutting it down to the right width, I noticed that there's a big old chunk right here. Now I can do a butt joint. And as, if I make this the back, you'll never see it. I'll know it's there and that would infuriate me. I could hide it on the inside but again, this is gonna be a butt joint. So you'll be able to see that big gap there or you'll be able to see it on the top if I do it this way. Um, so I've gotta make a repair. Now, I do have this guy and this is a jig that helps you cut tapered legs. Uh, this was given to me by uh, my wife's uncle. I looked at this for probably 10 minutes and I could Google instructions and I'd figure it out but this just about gave me an aneurysm. So we're gonna improvise. I have a piece of scrap wood and I'm gonna take my angle. Okay, so I'll find my angle where I need to cut off. I think I'll just do this whole chunk here. I'm going to just put a decent enough size. There we go. A decent enough spurts of this hot glue and we'll uh, just set that down there. there we go. Now let's take this over to the table saw and now I have my angle and I can just cut this harsh angle. Okay, now I've got one straight piece completely cut off that angle. This is another scrap piece that I could use because it's uh, down at the live edge side. And I'll just glue it there. Now I'm gonna be much happier with this seam than I would be hiding that hole. So I'll just glue it there, I'll let it dry, and then I'll come back and I'll square this back off. And hopefully that'll look pretty damn good.
To make these joints stronger, I will use through dowels. So I drilled my hole and then I get to test out this new little tool that I found. I will, uh, what I did was I just inserted a square, I don't know, rod into my uh, drill. I chamfered the sides a little bit just to give it a little bit of a tapered edge. Um, but this has an assortment of different sizes. You can find it in both metric, you can find it in standard inches, um, which is what I did. And it has a spinning carbide tip that you can, you can spin to all of the different sizes. And when you have it set, you just drive it on through. Now I do recommend securing this to your workbench. I just needed to use it really quick and I don't really know exactly where it's gonna live. So I held it down and I did get a piece of wood stuck in my hand, but the end result was exactly what I needed. Just a perfect dowel contrasting in color to um, make that joint just a bit, a bit stronger. Now, I don't think I mentioned it anywhere in the video, but for this project, I did go with cherry. Now, I don't really like the red of cherry all that much. My wife picked this special walnut stain to go over it, and I was hesitant at first, but it had just enough brown in it to cancel out a bit of that red, and I think actually ended up highlighting that dowel placement just a bit, and I actually ended up really, really liking it. So I'll probably be using cherry other places in the kitchen just so that way all of the wood matches and I'll be keeping the stain and probably the contrasting color of the walnut. Um, before I did the top, I went ahead and I ended, added a little bit of a round over and then I sprayed the top with some water just to give it a little bit of a grain pop before sanding it down so that way my top was silky smooth once the finish went on. Now this is where I was having issues with my camera overheating because I'm in the middle of a heat wave that was in the 115 range. But uh, essentially what I was going to do was I was going to glue the base onto the top. So this is actually me staining the bottom and I've taped off my glue areas, but I decided against this. Instead, I went with some Z fasteners and I just held it together that way. This allows for wood movement. Um, Accounting for wood movement still isn't second nature to me, so I have to uh, I have to remind myself to account for those things. So I put on this finish, I let it dry. When it was all done, I put on uh, two coats of wipe on poly just to give it a little bit of protection on top. I'm not gonna use this as a cutting board. Uh, this is really just a place for appliances to sit. Maybe we can make a sandwich on it. It's just additional little counter space uh, and I wouldn't cut on a quartz counter so essentially I'm going to treat this exactly the same. All right, friends, it is as easy as that. It is nothing crazy. It is very simple, and it is most definitely something that you can do with minimal tools. I don't buy S4S lumber. I buy rough cut mostly, so I have some milling to do. There's no crazy cuts. There's not even any miters. You could do this just on the table saw. I see these on Etsy for a couple hundred bucks, and I went with cherry, so it took me about $100 in material to make, and then I have a little bit of scrap left over. Uh, I'll show you up in the corner here of 
listings that I've seen. So you can definitely be successful with this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below for more videos like this one. If you haven't checked it out already, check out the office build. I'll link that up in the top in one of the corners and I'll catch you guys next time.